I need a better back support. Perfect, this is how you use it. Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here, and today I will be teaching you guys how to ace that software engineering interview. If you're in software engineering or studying computer science, you're probably already very familiar with the green book. In this video, I will be sharing with you guys how I use the green book. To start off, I would say the book can be divided into two different sections. The first section is more about learning about what the coding interview is all about, what are behavioral, what are technical, and I put less emphasis on those chapters. It's fair if you spend five minutes on average reading the first few sections, such as behavioral questions, big O analysis, that's a pretty important section I will put strong emphasis on that, or technical questions. So the only reason why I picked these three sections is because some of the technical interviews with companies, they do ask you some sort of behavioral questions as well as technical questions. And the book can cover those chapters pretty well. So I don't want to put too much emphasis on them, but out of those three sections, I would definitely pay a lot more attention on the big O. This is when you have to worry about runtime or space complexities. On average, most company likes to ask you about runtime complexity, and if you have a good understanding of that, that alone can be a game changer. If I were you, I would jump straight into the interviewing section, especially focusing on the data structure first. Now, moving on, I think out of all the chapters, chapter one, two, three, four are very important. These are the fundamental data structures, very common questions that you can see on the interview. So if you are getting ready for your technical interviews, most of the cases you have to leverage some sort of data structure to help you understand or solve these type of questions. Out of these four chapters, I would say one, three, and four are more important than linked lists. This is because array, tree, graph, or queue and stack comes up very often in interview questions. Almost all graph questions revolve some sort of like breadth first search traversal so knowing stack and queue help you solve those problems and then hash map is some of the data structure i have used multiple times in my interviewing careers so i will put strong emphasis on that and link list doesn't quite come up as much but if you're doing some sort of tree node you know those things do touch some of these concepts so i still want to make sure you study those sections but if you are very short on time it's better off to focus on what's more likely to happen. And after studying those four chapters, I would jump straight to chapter 10. Chapter 10 is about sorting, and sorting is something that comes up a lot. It's, some, it's pretty common for you, people to ask you some sort of algorithm questions that involve some sort of sorting or sorting equivalent technique like merge sort. Make sure to study up the sorting as well. So one, two, three, four, and then chapter 10. That's probably the first few chapters I will put my time into. Let's say now you have mastered these five chapters. What's next? Next up, I will move to a, mo a few more advanced topics such as chapter seven and chapter eight. Chapter seven focuses on objective-oriented programming and it's something that they can easily throw at you. They, the question may not be about objective-oriented programming, but having the knowledge in objective-oriented programming can help you structure a code in a way that makes more sense. Tell the interviewer, hey, I know my stuff. So that's definitely something I want to put an emphasis on. And next up, chapter eight is recursion and dynamic programming. So unfortunately, these are some of the very like more complex topics. In order to solve recursion questions, like you have to be very comfortable with it. So definitely spend a lot of time on that. The dynamic programming part in, in my career, like it doesn't come up as much, but when it does, it sucks. <laughs> so I would hope in on average, like they don't ask you that, those type of questions. But if you have time, definitely spend some time on the dynamic programming section. But I want you to especially focus on the recursion for now. And now you know which chapters are initially that require you to study. So how would I approach studying it? The first thing I would actually do is to read over the text formats some of the knowledge, making sure you actually know what they're talking about. Just filling your brain with any sort of basic information. Like you can skip some of the sections if you're already pretty comfortable or just at least skim through it. And then after that, I would study one topic and then alternate between the days. So for example, today I will focus on array, tomorrow I will focus on tree. This way, like I can target one particular questions and it doesn't have to be huge time commitment. 
how I would approach it is actually having the ability to understand the question. So what do I mean? I would first go to the question. Let's say I have a question number one. I would first read it and try to think about how I would solve this solution. I would first think about which data structure or which algorithm can help me solve it. Is it a graph question? Is it some sort of sorting question? I would try to categorize it. And the next thing I would do is think about in my head, what's the best runtime I can use to solve these questions? And this doesn't have to be you know, exact because something can happen when doing coding that changes up the thing, but at least try your best to think like what should be the runtime. This will help you practice for the runtime complexity and definitely set you up better. And all these processes should take less than two minutes. No coding, you can write down a few concepts, let's say hash table, you wanna reuse that, write it down, and then you think about how you would do it. So you can write some sort of small pseudocode, like for example, I wanna iterate through the loop, and then I wanna increment. Just very basic, that basic description of what you wanna do. If you can't think of it, don't worry. I actually don't code anything up. I jump straight to the solution. I read what the people are doing in the solution. This is where I spend majority of the time. I try to analyze what other people did in the solution, and a lot of the time, they offer you more than one approach. And you just try to pick out and see which one is similar to what you are doing. If they are similar, that's great. That means you are on the right track. And if they are not the same, don't worry. Sometimes maybe their solution or your solution still works, but you still want to understand what's the best solution that they have offered. And next up, I would actually study their algorithm and see if it makes sense. And if I see something really like, I would try to understand why they did it this way. And I would draw down some notes, like maybe structure their code a little bit, just gain myself familiarities about it. And I would go through this problem, maybe like five of them a day, and each of them will take less than five minutes. So let's say that's your study session. And next up, I would jump to chapter 16 and 17. I, I would do something similar. But these questions take longer, so I would actually spend longer time trying to understand them. And then once I finish chapter 16 and 17, based on how much time I have left in between my interview or whatever, I will go back from the beginning. Implementation that I can come up with using this, using my own approach or some, some solution approach. So this is kind of like trying to see how familiar and how in-depth you actually memorize. This is my technique called learn by example. And if you can solve the, these questions in your head without any assistance, pretty much on the dot, coding it should be a lot easier. So I think it's actually better off to practice how close you can get it to code in a pseudo way rather than, okay, let me think about how to solve this straight up. Because you waste a lot of time trying to come up with a solution that could be very challenging and it's not necessarily worth the time and it could damage your confidence, for example. So I actually prefer to just jump straight to the solution after quickly think about how I would solve Let's say you also have a system design section. Don't worry, the green book also have you covered. I would recommend checking out chapter nine. It tells you a pretty good idea about how to approach most system design questions and definitely read the chapters and try to do some of the questions. And same thing, you read it and you try to think of a, some, think of a way that you would solve it. And let's say spend no more than five minutes and then check the solution and see how they would solve it. You might ask, okay, what about some of the other chapters that I didn't mention? Some of the chapters that I didn't mention, you could study, but in particular, I would avoid studying chapter five and chapter six. Chapter five is bit manipulation and chapter six is math puzzles. It's really rare to have those type of questions if you're just interviewing for a general software engineering role. So I wouldn't put strong emphasis on those chapters because it's kind of like, sure, like if you know these one-off tricks, like you might solve that one question once in like a, a hundred years that they ask you. I hope they don't ask you those type of questions because like it's really hard to identify them. And chapter 14 and chapter 15, it's also very useful for system design as well. I just have a good understanding of some of the advanced topic. For example, chapter 14 database is very useful for system design, whereas chapter 15 is more about overall knowledge of the programming world and not necessarily questions that they may ask you, especially for an entry level job. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Put any questions, comment, concerns down below and uh, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you guys. See you guys next time.